Welcome back everybody. This is me, AC Mims, and I wanted to do a quick vlog today about what led me to being a life coach and talk a little bit about my journey and how I got here. So I actually got the motivation from doing this for doing this episode when for my day job I needed to write my story of self and talk about what led me into education. And while I was writing that, I realized that even though it was a really clear picture about how I became a teacher and later a principal, etc., it didn't really do justice to talk about what led me to being a life coach in particular. So my journey for becoming a life coach really began in 2012. But I should say it may not have started in 2012. 2012 is when I became conscious of my job as a life coach. Um, just like with anything in life, we realize when we look back with hindsight that, you know, hindsight is 2020 and we realize there might have been signs and signals all along the way, but we may not have been conscious of it. So in 2012 was when I became really conscious of my work as a life coach. And it didn't start with this grand scheme of, oh, this is a career I want to choose. Really, it started with my life falling apart. So for those of you all who may have been following my blog all along, you know that 2012, early 2012 was um, a really rough period for me. It was a period um, around that time I had suffered my third miscarriage and I had been dealing with depression. Um, my marriage was on the rocks and just felt like my life was falling apart. And at that time, I was in traditional therapy and I had been in therapy, oh my goodness, off and on for maybe 12 years at that point. And even though my life was just in a shambles, it felt therapy just didn't quite seem right for me at that time. I was really clear about what my issues were. I knew what my pathologies were. I knew what my patterns were. And I understood how it created me to be who I was. And I, and I had done some work around that. And really what I needed at that time was an, a, tools to move forward. I didn't need to explore the what and the why. I needed the how and how do I move forward. And you know, whenever there's no path, they say to create one. And that's what I did. So I decided to really write my way through my pain and write my way through um, the issues and the situations that I was going through. And so I started off writing a series about myself and love. And if you Google or go back on, you know, some of the archives, I started just pondering, what did it mean to be in love? Who was I now as this woman um, in a marriage or in as a parent, even though um, I didn't give birth to my daughter, I was very much a parent. And what did I still believe about love? And as I was writing that series, it really solidified a lot of things for me and a lot about my beliefs. And I really believe love is the center of who we all are. I feel like that is the supreme force in the universe. And I feel like that's what we're all called to do. We're all called to be loving and to and to use that love to heal and to evolve ourselves. But in doing that, I asked myself a lot of questions and got to become really clear about who I was and what my beliefs were. And then I went into my next series about coming into my own. And that led to a series thinking about if this is what my fundamental beliefs are, what is it that I believe about being a woman now? Now that at that time, I think I was um, 33, 34, what did I believe about being a woman? How did I define myself? What were my values? And again, I did a lot of work around that. And, I, and as I was writing these series, and there are a couple of more I'll talk about in a moment, I, I I did it. I did this healing and I did this work publicly for a few reasons. One, simply it held me accountable. It's really easy for me to bury my issues. And I'm sure like a lot of you, it's really easy for me not to talk about it and to kind of glide through life and, and just go through the day to day routine. But in writing about it, it really forced me to confront it. And not to just to confront it, to talk about it, but to create um, exercises and tools for myself to move through it and to move through it in a really healthy way. Um, it was also really important for me to be publicly vulnerable. Um, I think there's so much shame that comes with being silent about our journeys. And it's always been really important for me to be public about my vulnerability because I think it gives people permission to be vulnerable with themselves as well. I've always, um, I remember when I first came out in, oh goodness, when I was 17, 18 at that time, and how I decided on my campus, on my undergraduate campus at the time to be, to self-identify as a black lesbian. And that was a big deal because there weren't 
any that I knew of publicly. And I didn't want other women to go through the same shame that I felt. And I didn't want them to have to feel like, you know, they didn't have an ally. So it's always been really important for me to be publicly vulnerable and to give and to show other people that their world is not going to fall apart if they choose to be who they are unashamed. Also, um, I wanted to make sure that other people saw in their own issues and in their own journey that they have an ally as well. And so in me being really public about my journey at that time, many women, um, including friends, family members, and strangers started coming to me, asking me for advice, applying the same lessons that I was talking about in my blog to their own lives and using me as a thought partner through that. So that really birthed my coaching, um, my coaching career. Um, at that time, after I wrote my coming into my own series, I talked about authentically me. And that's where um, I started to get that that tagline for myself that I'm all about authenticity and integrity. And I wanted to explore what did that mean to be authentic as a human being? What does it mean to match your actions with your words um, and your beliefs? And what kind of steps do you need to take to be able to move through that fear of being authentic? And again, that was something that was really powerful for a lot of women in particular. And then I did a final series around healing. And it it was a 30 day um, exercise in healing. Um, so that's just a little bit about why I came to be a life coach and why this work was personal for me. Um, I really believe the personal is political in the sense that as we are all willing to deal with our individual issues and our individual stuff and to heal from it, we're able to bring other people along in a way that's going to be really transformative for the world and for our own evolution as human beings. I'm really excited with the work that I'm doing here on L Theory. I'm excited about my first webinar that was about living your dreams. And I really enjoy working with the clients that I have now. And so if you are new to my blog and new to my work, I definitely encourage you to dig around and start with one of the pages about getting to know me and about my future topics because it'll give you a really good introduction into what I do. So that's just a little bit about me and how I became a life coach. I look forward to my next vlog and please leave comments, questions, or any thoughts you have below. Talk soon.